Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Paul Blark's Garage. It's kind of going to be a second video of me explaining about the transmission. Uh, I said that uh, I had something I want to come clean on. And basically what that was is I actually did not install this transmission. Um, there was just too many modifications that needed to be done. I wanted to take it to a shop that had a, a lift. And uh, while well, I do have a Sawzall, we don't have a lift. I just really didn't want to be on my back um, for a long period of time. Uh, but I wanted to show y'all some flaws in this thing, in the swap, and what had to be done. Um, this is a, an 88 GMC Sierra. It had to originally a 7 or a 4 in it. And somebody, well, when I bought it, the 7R4 after I got the truck running was blown up and uh, somebody ran it without the detent cable which we all know that most of those 7R4's line pressure is controlled by the detent cable and so I bought this used 350 turbo from a guy and uh, had this installed from a, sh a local shop and uh, I knew um, that when you do these because the um, 700 R4 I think is about an inch and a half longer from uh, bell housing to tail housing and the 350 turbo is a little shorter um, but as you can see see how much yoke is sticking out which it is jacked up it is going to pull it out a little bit as you raise the front up and that yoke on the end of there I think is about six inches long and uh, believe it or not um, the 350 turbo, as you see from the tail housing, uh, the electrical plug-in on the back back there is for your speedometer, and it's electronic. Most of your your 350 turbos come with the uh, the cable uh, operated speedo, and I had asked the guy that was installing if there's any way that he could, uh, you know, make it work, and uh, he said it could. So um, I think, which I'm not 100% sure, probably should have asked. Um, <clears throat> I'm thinking he took the 700R4 turbo tail housing off and stuck it on the 350 turbo, which before he done that, I called uh, Monster Transmission, and they said it wouldn't probably wouldn't work, and then I called a local trans shop uh, here, Dean's Transmission, and I gave him the measurements and stuff, and and uh, you know told him how long the yoke was and and uh the best i could and he said well um there's a i think it's a uh i don't know if it's a bushing uh, actually y'all may know what more what i'm trying to tell you than i do but um and it's hard to get up under here and hold this camera at the same time and explain what's going on but uh just bear with me uh right in here is a is a I don't know if it's called a bushing. I'm not. I can't remember what it's called, but this has to go in there and go through that so much before it to be safe to drive and before it to work right. And to me, it just seems like a lot of access of a yoke sticking out. Uh, if you actually take the drive shaft out, the splines coming out of the uh, the rear shaft coming out of this transmission is actually protruding out this far so this is actually sliding on there but it's just not in here but about an inch because believe it or not this thing is about six and a half inches uh, I don't know how long uh, you know somebody when I called transmission shop he asked me how long my yoke was I told him it looked it appeared to be about six to six and a half inches and he said he most of them he knew that coming these trucks was like four inches but as you can tell that's longer than four inches and that's what she said but anyway um also um had to be done is uh when the, when the swap was made and i drove it i noticed there was a lot of vibration and uh a lot of noise and i jacked it up and looked up under it <clears throat> and the trans mount which is right there was broken half <clears throat> and you actually have to move his cross member forward an inch and I thought you know that the installer had already done that which that hadn't been done and you basically have to cut in the frame Hell, I can't get an angle on it but uh, right there where you see the front of the cross member is where how much they had to cut into the frame to slide it forward 
so that that bolt so that the transmission mount will line up with the where it uh, bolts up on the bottom there of the uh, cross member for it to line up correctly the bolt so when you're driving it doesn't rip the uh, trans mount apart which that's what happened and I had to take it back down there and get them to modify it uh, basically I had to tell them you know that was it right and what they had to do because I watched the video where some guys did it and pretty simple if you got a sawzall and a, a drill and some good bits but uh, that's a whole lot of yoke sticking out of course it does have the tail shaft or the main shaft or rear shaft out of the transmission going up in there in the yoke about three inches um, Dean's transmission here in Foley, Alabama said from what I dimensions I gave him he said he as long as it went in there and uh, went in that uh, I don't know if it's a sham or what it is I, I can't remember what it's called but it's, it's uh, usually when you buy a seal or this tail housing it comes with one and it's uh it fits in here and I can't remember for the life of me what it's called but anyway it goes up in there I actually watched them put the drive shaft in and it went in about a I'd say about an inch to an inch and a half but uh, that is a long yoke and I uh, kind of don't feel comfortable about it I kind of honestly would rather find another tail housing to mount up because it just bolts up with four bolts I'd rather find another tail housing this part here that's longer which I'm gonna measure it and I'm gonna do some research and see if I can't find one because it'd be really easy to install you just take the dry shaft down with those four bolts back there and then take the dry shaft down and then uh, uh, unplug that sensor which that's gonna be another thing finding a 350 turbo that actually comes with that sensor and I thought I, I thought somebody I thought I saw one uh, on eBay that had one of those that said it was a 4350 turbo but I got to do some measuring but uh, I want the speedometer to work but for safety reasons if I have to just replace that with uh, the original 350 turbo housing it come off of it just for it to be safe and have no speedometer I can get an app for my phone where I can tell how fast I'm going uh, but uh, back to the install you just undo those four bolts on that housing and it's got o-ring in there and it's really easy to swap out but uh, <clears throat> I didn't do this a local shop down the road did and I, I have the tools to do it it's just laying on my back for a long period of time by myself trying to balance this transmission on a jack and uh, all the modifications that I knew had to be made I just couldn't do it um, I can do it or could have done it when I was about in my 20s but I'm old and fat and uh, that's why I called myself Paul Bart's Garage. I'm about as hefty as he is. But uh, anyway, that's the truth on that. Um, I would have never have done this job and handed it to somebody in the condition it was when I got it. And then when I took it down there to have it fixed, uh, it took a couple of days for them to fix it. And uh, which the shop was busy. I understand that but I'd already paid the money for the install. I felt like since I'd already paid to have it done and done right, that it should have been done right. And when I brought it down there, it should have been a priority, but it is what it is. Uh, but anyway, uh, and I noticed the bolt over there is not even tight. That's something I'm gonna have to tighten down is that bolt there. Uh, and that looks like it's tight, but anyway, kind of want to do a video to come clean that, uh, you know, I'd made it sound like I installed it which I think I use words like I installed or installed or whatever but I wanted to just let you know that uh, I can do this kind of thing but chose not to be lay on my back it didn't cost me but about uh, $500 to have this thing put in here and uh, but anyway that's that and uh, I got my oil change done with minimum oil, oil stainage on my on my driveway getting ready to add the oil back in it put the timing tape on it and time this thing and see where we are from there as far as my backfire issue but uh, anyway appreciate you watching and uh, this is another edition of Pablo Arch Garage and I'll holler back at y'all when I got another project going